Hi friends, today in this lecture we are going to talk about the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. So before we actually go to the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, I want to explain briefly about the pathology of rheumatoid arthritis. Yes, so coming to the pathology, see rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease where your immune system is going to destroy your joints. It's a type of self-destruction and this rheumatoid arthritis is more common in women when compared to men and it often occurs in those individuals who are greater than 40 years old. So rheumatoid arthritis is all about formation of panels in your joints and as the pandas grows in size in your joints it is going to leads to the destruction of joints yes this is briefly about the pathology of rheumatoid arthritis so coming to the treatment there are four main categories of drugs employed in the management of rheumatoid arthritis so the first category of drugs are called as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and the second category of drugs are called as disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs and the third category of drugs are named as biological agents and the fourth category of drugs are named as steroids so coming to the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are used to treat the symptoms but these drugs never ever be used to change the pathology of the disease if you really want to change the pathology of the disease you need to go to second category of drugs named as DMARDS or you can go to third category of drugs called as biological agents or you can even go to fourth category of drugs called as steroids so non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are only meant to treat the symptoms yes so this is the first point so coming to the second point never ever use NSAID monotherapy so whenever you want to give this non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs to your rheumatoid arthritic patient you need to give two non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs but you should never give this non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug in your treatment regimen as a single non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug so these drugs should always be used in combination with other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for instance, you can give the combination of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen and as well as meloxicam. So moving to the next category of drugs called disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. According to the American College of Rheumatology recommendations in 2008 and as well as in 2012, which is the recent update of 2008, it tells that the usage of certain DMARTs and biological agents. So what are these certain DMARTs and what are these certain biological agents suggested by this American College of Rheumatology in its recommendations in 2008 and as well as 2012. So there are four gold standard DMARTs as far as the recommendations by this American College of Rheumatology is concerned in 2008 as well as in 2012, these four gold standard DMARTs includes the first one is methotrexate, the second one is leaflunomide and the third one is hydroxychloroquine and the fourth one is sulfasalazine. So you need to give this methotrexate as a first line agent and you need to give this leaflunomide as second line agent and you can give this hydroxychloroquine 
as well as sulfa salazine as the third line agent but the point you need to remember is when the individual is not responding to the methotrexate or when the individual is contraindicated to methotrexate then you need to give the second line drug that is leflunamide and methotrexate as well as leflunamide is usually contraindicated in pregnancy so in these situations we needs to give the hydroxychloroquine so friends if the patient is not responding to a single disease modifying anti rheumatic drug then it does not mean that you needs to give the next category of drugs called biological agents you should not do that but rather what you needs to do is you should make an attempt to give the combination of multiple disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs and this gives rise to a concept called combination therapy of disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs so let's discuss about this different combinations of disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs most commonly these combinations include two drugs out of which most of are methotrexate based so the first combination of drugs of dmars you can give is methotrexate with hydroxychloroquine and the second combination is methotrexate with leflunamide and the third combination is methotrexate with sulfa salazine or you can call it as minocycline and the fourth combination is you can give sulfa salazine with hydroxychloroquine but you can give even three drugs of dmars for instance you can combine methotrexate with hydroxychloroquine as well as with sulfa salazine which is a powerful combination therapy in those patients who are having severe rheumatoid arthritis even after giving these three drugs if the patient is not responding or if the patient is not having any change in the pathology then now you should move to the next category of drugs called biologics so the biological agents includes two classes of drugs the first class is non tnf drugs and the second class is anti tnf drugs so what is the exact difference between these two classes see the exact difference between these two classes is if you see these non tnf drugs these are the drugs that are not targeted to tumor necrosis factor alpha and whereas anti tnf drugs are those drugs that are specially designed to target tumor necrosis factor alpha so what are the different drugs that comes under this first class called non tnf these drugs includes abatacept and rituximab but if you see the recent guidelines of american college of rheumatology in 2012 it adds another drug in this class we call it as tocilizumab so coming to the next class that is anti tnf the first drug is adalimumab the second drug is etanercept and the third drug is infliximab but when you see the recent guidelines that is updated in 2012 american college of rheumatology adds some other drugs into this class and these drugs includes sertolizumab pegol and as well as golimumab so these are the biological agents that you can give to the rheumatoid arthritic patient if the disease is so severe but the precaution you needs to take before giving this biological agents is you must make sure that these individuals are out of vaccination or these individuals are not suffering with tb or as well as these individuals are not having any fungal infections the next thing i wants to tell you is see not all the individuals are responsive to anti tnf agents according to international recommendations given by ular one third of the patients shows insufficient response to anti tnf agents and it also says that 
in this one third of the patient switching to a non tnf targeted therapy is going to be acceptable strategy so what do you mean by eular eular is nothing but it is an european league against rheumatism it is a large international task force based decisions on evidence so this is all about biological agents so going to the next category of drugs called steroids prednisone is the most commonly used oral steroid and this drug is given to treat acute flares of pain steroids are used as a bridging therapy and are particularly useful when you are introducing disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs that take several months to take effect so that is why we give the steroids to treat this patient initially before the actual effect of dema therapy begins so this is my end of my lecture if you really like this lecture please share this video and please subscribe to the channel